I'm with Bren and Jordan. Yes, sir. Jordan uh, it's also goes under the name Unlearn. Mm-hmm. We're going to get into that a little bit later because I have a lot of questions. And uh, we're going to see where his head's at with that name, why you came up with that name, and if you actually think outside the box from that name. Okay. I gave well, you a heads get, up. All right. I'm ready for it. Yeah. Will you be ready? Also, we're here with Bren. This is kind of Bren's second interview I believe he's ever had. He had an interview with uh, Jason at Hip Hop Tick Tactics. I didn't hear it, but I, from all the feedback I got, it went well. Are you excited about today? Yeah. I'm looking forward to it and be able to show my impression. You show your impression. Well, well put. Today's, today is going to be a little different than the normal impression extension, where I do have the two of these guys here. Both of them, I am very interested in knowing and understanding their view of certain things in the world and how they see things unfolding. Both these guys are young. They're in their early 20s, and uh, you know they see things a little different than I do. So I'm hoping that we're able to have a safe space talk about some of these topics. If there is something that's taboo, we'll be able to kind of stop and not continue or edit. Or if you just want to walk out at any time, it's all on you. There is no obligation to be here, and this won't make the air if we don't need it to. Let the funny games begin. (laughs) Okay, so last time I was with Jesse, and Jordan and Jesse started talking about some crazy stuff (laughs) that my head was going to explode. (laughs) What does that mean? I'm going to have Jordan go over a couple of the topics that him and Jesse talked about. And then I would like Brennan to come in and talk and have you two maybe for 5, 10, 15 minutes talk about some of those things. Uh, Well, there were a lot of topics touched on. Obviously, she was, uh, you had her in discussing um, yoga and I guess a lot of, you know, the energy and kind of more of the spiritual uh, aspect of it, et cetera. Um, For those not familiar, Reiki is kind of a, a traditional energy practice. Um, within again, if you missed the uh, last uh, impression expression show, go check that out. Um, and uh, really, just kind of got into you know, well, I guess I don't think it was technically uh, being recorded. It wasn't. Well, None of it was no. being recorded. But I wish it was. I yeah. sat there and I'm like, damn, like these guys need to be on tape. It was amazing the stuff you were talking about and how fast you were. What you know, I, Reiki, all that stuff. Okay, fine. I yep. want some more of the heavier stuff. You started talking about World War II being run by the pharmaceutical companies. Uh, you started yes. talking about um, like these conspiracies that about from all the way from nutrition and just controlling you in society. Like I want all that stuff. Brennan has been doing a lot of research with this. And that's the stuff I want. The problem is where to start. Like, yeah, exactly. Just start. Ah. Okay, let's start. How did you get into looking at conspiracy theories? Um, so my family, um, had unfortunately, uh, they were specifically on the one side where uh, displaced people come in here uh, during the war. Um, they were, long story short, actually kicked out of their house. Um, the, it was, uh, they were born in Latvia rushed out by Russian soldiers, became German citizens, and um, partook in in the war events, etc. Uh, my grandfather himself, um, very, very skeptical man. I think he was one of the first people that really put me onto it. Um, now, you can't get a copy of Mein Kampf, which is uh, Hitler's uh, autobiography, he wrote while he was in prison post World War One. Uh, for those not familiar, he was actually a, a, a high up sergeant in the First World War, and uh, was incredibly displeased by the way that I guess his country had, um, you know, not succeeded in the First War, which really drove um, kind of the nationalism that brought about World War Two in Germany. We can get into the whole aspects of anything from Himmler's crazy nuts round t- thinking he was a reincarnate of Sir Arthur to you know all the other So this is a guy that was in World War 1 and was Hitler. against So oh you're talking about Hitler. Thought, yeah, oh, Hitler oh, thought... And then sorry I just mentioned Himmler so like right. that, that's more World War 2 based. So uh Mein Kampf was written by Adolf Hitler and uh yeah like So my, that book can't be found? You can only go to libraries and look at it. You can't actually. So nobody's transcribed it, put it online, nothing like that. I may or may not have a copy of it. Um 
But so, so it is. If someone's search, really searching for it, they can find it. More than likely. Right. It's not like it's, it's, like any other it's not book. like it's been burned back in the days and yeah, no like copies the, were now it's just a storytelling going through. Yeah. Not the uh not like the um Book of Barnabas. That's right. another story. <laughs> well, that's um, what I mean. Like these wormholes or rabbit holes seem to not just go from like let's go down the rabbit hole. It's like let's go down the rabbit hole and then there's way more rabbit holes and you oh, never, never ends, right. Yeah. It just it just you could go hard left, hard right, hard left, or in a different direction every time. Literally. And it always leads to something super interesting, especially somebody who's aware and is understands kind of maybe not understands what's going on, but at least has an awareness to that there could be something going on yep. and is able to critically think about both sides of it and kind of put something together. Yep. That's why you're here. And I don't see, that's where I don't know. Should I, I could just go on to you know, the difficulties of trying to be, you know, actually analytical of this stuff. And okay. Not. And here's where we're going to go then. Yeah. I have an idea you, because I, you, you have so this. much, you have the other day you're talking about so many things and I'm not sure what Bren knows. So, you know, you might be talking about Hitler and all these things and Bren might not really understand where that's coming from because he hasn't, he hasn't got to that point. I'm yet. more of like the radical, uh, like the facts and statistics. Uh, it's not really me. I went into like the most radical, the deepest, like insane theories that are not provable at all. That's what I was. Interested okay. So in, why so. don't we start with Brennan and see where I, he's at and then you can kind of come in and, assist or whatever yeah i think that'd be a great idea okay let's okay. do that well okay. where to start like it's up to you what's one thing on your mind one of those right now one i just thought of the other day was the titanic okay now knowing what i know that was i had to be a setup i i thought i find it's like it's it's at the point of comedic they called it the sh- unsinkable ship right forever it was the most famous unsinkable ship and then it hits an iceberg in the perfect location to sink it yep mm, that's fishy uh, what's actually funny about that is there was uh, merging oil companies post um, the whole Titanic, etc. Only one of those five individuals that was part of a merge was not on that ship. Yeah. What do you go. mean? That one, I, I don't know. I so, can't... so you're saying there was like five oil companies and they're like their CEOs or their owners yep. were on that? Well, everybody was on that ship. Like exactly. if you want to call a spade Perfect. a spade, and, right? In the middle yep. of the ocean. And one, yep, one of them didn't happen to and post that he happened to make a lot of money exactly okay yeah. so, <laughs> coincidence right is yeah, it, it well is it a coincidence right so no. when i when i looked at the titanic and i you know i watched the movie yeah, and of course. i watched the movie um but you know a few of the technical things like that iceberg ripping the sides down and all the certain water safety compartments all got torn at the same time that's why yeah. it sunk so fast so you're saying no that didn't happen it's just it's it's like you ha- as a conspiracy theorist you have to kind of accept you can't just say something's a coincidence because that's just limited knowledge. So you have to look, you have to build a story for how it's not a coincidence. So you follow the money is a, one of the best ways to figure out who benefits the most off this happening, like he said, with 100%. the oil companies. So that provides a story. Is that the only, because, you know, yes, there was oil, I'm sure, but I'm sure there was banking. It was I'm a sure there was fact, like it's got to be all, all the big takeout, big really. Exactly. And all those were, you know, we're talking, you know, like pretty much what pre it was technically just pre World War One about fifteen okay. twenty years before eighteen ninety I want to say mid eighteen nineties I don't remember yeah I don't remember it was when the Titanic really? that long ago it was early ninety all I know I believe it was post World War One okay. what do you think about this new Titanic that's getting built the one that's like the replica right now it's almost finished and they're going to be doing like the maiden voyages and all that stuff like very soon I believe I think it's this like next summer. I actually have not heard about yeah. any of that. Although, if this thing does sink, I'm, yeah. I might laugh. I might <laughs> laugh. Who, who's yeah. going to go on? Like, oh, qu- yeah, first yeah. question is who's, who's going to be, be on, on it, ship? right? And that's what I also wonder, too, about, okay, so now let's go a different direction. Uh, space travel. So not so okay. much space travel where we're going to go to the moon, but like guys like um, Virgin Space Plan, where they're just trying to get people into the atmosphere. Yep. For a little bit and then back down. You think that's dangerous? That's all what it's meant to be, or is there more to it, or is that just kind of a fun hobby for the rich? Um, I think it's a bit of both. Unfortunately, I think the rich have a lot of fun hobbies that us <laughs> people, you know, that aren't made available to the public. And I mean, just even on that note, I think that's part of the issue. And uh, again, if you want to, I once called myself a conspiracy theorist. Now I just call myself a realist, and that's yeah. why I will never say anything's factual. Or not I will say coincidence and let the individual decide for themselves what they want to think about how do you decide though what is you're going to assume is fact in fiction you know online right now you can they can doctor video and stories like it's no tomorrow 
you have to, and that's again talking about paper trail, knowing how to properly research. I mean, we get it nailed down our throats being a university student as well, right? How to, you know, properly fact check. I was just gonna say fact check, right? Yeah. I, you know, I was shown a video, and the first the first part of the video was a quote, and it said Adolf Hitler in a picture of him, and the first thing I said was. How do I know that wasn't just some person typing a quote, putting Adolf Hitler's name there? And yeah, how do I take a quote that is being presented as an Adolf Hitler quote and actually using it for real? I find the easiest way is to go through certain national legislations and see if there's any things running in line. Um, I, I hate I, this is going to be a very job top or jump topic interview. I do apologize to the listeners. We're, yeah, it's going to be a whole circle of topics. Oh, um, we're going to be all over the board. 100%. Yeah, yeah. Completely. Uh, And yeah, where was I just going with that? Um, With the fact checking and things like that. Yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, a CBC article uh, just went out, you know, talking about um, and this was, uh, yeah, basically uh, the Genevieve uh, Convention. There's um, basically it's not being followed with what's going on, uh, per se, with the um, ice camps down in Mexico, etc., and somebody spelled out, um, you know, this doesn't comply with the Genevieve, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. This is a huge national crisis. Well, and then I actually I decided, you know what, I'll pull it up in a bunch of different places, blah, 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 blah. So, yes, there are violations happening right now, but it has to be violations of the own country's attacking military. So in Mexico, it's not the American military that's harassing people down there. It's Mexican military, et cetera. But they're claiming – some places are claiming it's American military or um, just military? <laughs> just exactly. Just military. But now yeah. when they come across the border and the Americans are you know, being steadfast against it, there's already just – it's an, and that's even loopholes in international law. And that's where you'll see a lot of you know, these so-called conspiracy theories. This is because it's all gray areas. None of it's truly black. Well, this is what – right. Because you, know, you look at the main new, news. You look at CNN, Democrat, and you look at Fox – Republican. Well, how yeah. can everything be cut so 50-50? 50 50 49 51 50 and a half 49 and a half how can half of the population think one thing and half not as soon as there's a divide there's always one on top one has to overlook mm. the divide okay so this is where i want to go here yeah. right so we're all sheep you could say that and who's I think- not a sheep or how can we become not a sheep oh. maybe we'll save that one for a second uh, yeah oh. money would seem become super rich, but even he, the super rich could be sheep. We have no idea. Yeah, and well, to not be sheep. So I guess if we're going to talk about, you know, you hear the term get thrown around being woke, and I, that's and okay. So again, we're talking, you know, that whole uh, the Mayan calendar that we touched on last time. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so, Which is good news to me because you said we're going into a good six hundred years, yes. coming out of a bad six hundred years. Or again, I apologize if anyone can fact check that. It's either. 2,400, 600, or it's 2,800, 700. I honestly can't remember that off the top. There was well, 2,800 bad years. And okay. now 700 good is what you're saying? Um, so basically, it's a quarterly cycle that happens every... 2,800 years. Yeah, or again, 2,400. Oh, okay, so it would go boom, boom, boom. 7, 7, 7, 7, 7. Yeah, okay. or 6, 6, 6, 6. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. Well, I, that's, that's a whole other... Well, yeah. before we continue, I just want to make a quick disclaimer. We know nothing. Anything we say is really not fact. I can't and, say anything. Right, so. It is up for the listener right now to decide <laughs> yeah. what they would like to exactly. believe or what you they know, would like to This see. is from our life experiences. Yep. This is from research that we've done. And yeah, I'm a university student, so I've done research. And so has uh, Jordan over here. And Brennan's just getting into it. But, you know, just for whatever, whatever we're saying, this is what we've seen, what we've heard, what we feel, that energy around us. And we're coming up to our life world and how our interpretation of things are going down. Precisely. Right. All in, all into the uh, individual's interpretation. Okay. So let's get back to this sheep and run in the show. So Illuminati, right? <laughs> Big word. One. It's been around a long time. A lot of people use it as the elite people running the show. Why is that? Um, well... Uh, I believe it was actually the CIA that invented the term conspiracy theorist in yeah. the mid '60s. It was right near when JFK got assassinated. Precisely, yeah. which I don't know if anybody wants to. Um, I don't know if you want to dive into that a little bit more regarding um, like why, because he was obviously very anti-crime. Um, all the you know the thing about the shooting and the the umbrella flashing, all that stuff, right? And people can sit there and overthink it, overthink it, overthink it. 
And I think one thing, and this, this is actually the ultimate thing I, people need to keep in mind when talking about so-called conspiracy theories. And I think this is where it becomes onto the individual. How evil do you think people yeah, are capable one. of being? If you hmm. think that whether you yourself or somebody else is capable of complete, you know, complete and terrible, like just doing the unthinkable. Well, we've seen it. Let's look at genocide. I believe it. How can somebody go and burn a village of women, children, and people unable to protect themselves? How can somebody go do that? Now, in Africa, that's still a human. That's still a person. That yep. guy and his group of people that are slaughtering. So, right. Like, I don't know if we got to look any further than that. I don't think there's a limit. I think completely heartless, empathyless actions is like pretty common greed anger regret and then people just tell themselves like lies to keep themselves saying like it's like i was just researching about uh like john wayne gacy he was interviewing and he said he didn't believe he made any of the murders like he said it wasn't me someone else buried them under my porch yeah it's like you 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 try so hard to convince yourself you're not evil that you don't even realize you are and then they're so far gone and they just don't care about another human life it's, Do you know about this guy? Um, a little bit, not as much. I'm more familiar with some of the other, like other, you know, serial killers, yeah, psychopaths. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, I was just in a class about teaching the importance of play in educating young children and how how society has taken away the ability to play and now kids are having less skills that can cope with everyday age when they're older. And there was a study, and I believe his name is Brown, where he he went and interviewed i think 21 mass murderers in the states yeah. and found that the only thing that they all had familiar with each other was that neither and none of them played with peers ever they were antisocial. socially antisocial huh. but yep. it was also the rough and tumble type of play that they didn't even have from their parents or anywhere in their lives which is like a give and take you know you go a little bit too far when you're play fighting it hurts somebody, and you, you got to self regulate right, back. right it goes back and forth and that was the one thing that made that was part of that so for me i would look at that study and say well they weren't born it was a killer. It, was it, it was because they, were, they, they weren't raised. Were they born a killer? This is the right. This is where this hope and like from that research alone, I would say they weren't born a killer. But there's also a bunch of people that kind of were probably in their same situations that didn't turn out to be a killer yeah. either. I personally think, and again, this is just a simple opinion, and I hope I'm not going to regret saying this on the air. I think everybody is capable of doing what they yes. think they're not capable of doing. And I agree. It's only until you are put into a situation or, again, a lot of it you see um, it, it happens prematurely. It is the way the child is raised in an environment, like you said. And actually, I never even considered that whole give and take philosophy. But yeah, so when they have somebody, and I hate to go this extreme, you know, somebody tied up, the things that they're going to do can seem completely normal to them because they've never – not only been on that receiving end, but there's never been that limitation or that gap or let alone even a voice in their head that said this is abnormal. Right, or an understanding yeah. that I'm hurting that other person. Exactly. They just don't know because they've never been hurt in that same way. Or they're acting out of pain or out of anger or again, money is another greed. All these all these human traits and that's why – and here's where I – again, another topic that we touched on you know, about the divide. You can't talk about good and evil. There's no such thing as good and evil. It is all one circular thing. It is like you, like uh, Bren was saying, we have all of those forceful, um, you know, so-called evil traits, greed, desire, lust, you know, et cetera. But we also have the ability to be peaceful, to be kind, you know, to be conscious, to be diligent, all those. So it really comes down and yeah, it comes down to the individual at the end of the day and just what more of those do they possess? So when we're talking about conspiracy theories, not only a lot of people in this, you hear the word naive. And I think it's people who are so-called sheep are just naive yeah, because they can't physically understand that they're – that even them themselves are capable of doing that. But yet even then, they might have had a traumatic occurrence in their life where they did something that they completely are regretting and feel guilty. And that, again, that guilt overwhelms them. And they become naive to the topic. So they just block it out. Exactly. Then, yeah, I think I think 
most humans, it seems like a natural trait, we have a desperate want for comfort, for repetition, for patterns, for comfort, for safety. Yeah. And I think finding out that the world is crazy and that everything might not be the way it seems for too many people is too much. Like, like you know, someone who's lived 50 years raising a family and making tea every morning to even think of something like 9-11 or whatever. Well, I think of my parents, and I'm sure maybe your parents, but your parents are probably younger than my parents. They are oblivious yeah. to almost everything. Yeah. You know, we talked about uh, discrimination, uh, my dad and I, and some racism, and he had some examples and I'm like, yeah, yeah, no chance you could say that these days. Yep. And he did not understand it. He thought I was going too far and yeah, cautioning on the side of too being too equality and yeah. less discrimination. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. How can you be how can you go too far on the side of being careful and not as opposed to cutting maybe that that line too close? And I yep. thought he was cutting it too close. And I, and you know, at the end of the day, he actually made a joke similar to what i was getting on him and it was to me it was like yeah you know what you kind of get it a little bit now yeah but again these are old timers that it's different yeah. it's Ig- totally different ignorance is as you know terrible as it is bliss yeah exactly i it's, hate to say it's, it's great for the ignorant people it's horrible for the people who aren't yeah. so okay good good topic now the people that aren't so if they're living in a horrible situation that sucks and why would you want to live in a horrible situation and most of them don't. I think if you don't mind me kind of putting this on the mm-hmm. on the other side of it, it's it's not. Uh, and the opposites, the victim. Now the uh, too many opposites, victim mentality versus being an actual victim. Most of the people who are you know more tra- let's say traditionally racist were never victims of you know of discrimination. Mm-hmm. They were always inside that uh, the uh, I'll call an upper circle. You know, right. and I like I, I lived up north for a bit and I can even still see that kind of prevalent today. Just the way that certain, you know, colors or races are referred to. But on the flip side, if it was inverse, you know, and I don't think people even take the ch- and again, maybe it's lacking empathy, but taking the time to actually, you know, flip your flip the shoes. Now, I think about that and I close my eyes. And it seems like there's a little bit of a North American Western society outlook on the way conspiracies unfold and the way things are rolling in Earth. Now, I then quickly go to China and I've been to Mm. China a few times and I'm talking north, like everywhere in China. I've seen a lot of situations that are disgusting. But I ask myself this. Someone's born in China into one of these factories with their family. They live in this factory apartment their entire lives, work in this factory, yep. and then they die. Shout out Walmart. <laughs> What's the purpose of that life? Or is that even life? Right? That Great is question. a human being that was born into that situation. Is that human an equal human to everybody else? An unequal human? And if so, like how, how can we equal? allow that yeah. to happen? What's equal? In the eyes of who, right? It's my question. I've heard the quote used, people were meant to be a resource, the same way we treat animals, the same way, you know, we can yeah. just, you know. We're heard. Like it could be why we're creative in one of the deep conspiracies. Exactly. So would those be farmed humans? You could go as far as saying that and see that's where I don't, I'm not going to go into as far as, is there, you know, different you know, higher powers that are embodied, you know, is, is the world run truly by a bunch of, you know, satanic cannibalists, you know, like are these, are these, you know, things, you know, way before human knowledge. Cause again, we can't even necessarily attest other than certain, you know, geographical or geological studies, you know, how long we've been alive for. It goes to, we don't have knowledge. Like it, our past is one of the quotes is we're a species with amnesia. Yep. We don't know how we were created. We can't find out. It's whoever created us. Either nature did its thing and we lost the knowledge or whoever created us didn't want us to know why. Yep. And they did a good job and it's 2019 and there's no... Well, and Oh, sorry, go yeah, ahead. No, no, no. You go. Well, no, I think it's actually going to get worse because now where's all our data stored? The internet. But this, we never had data before. But it was still handwritten. Except, so yeah. basically you could still find and that's why these, you know... Articles, so example, the the Barnabas, um, there was a, another basically book um, found the Vatican. It was the price on it before the Vatican. I think the Vatican paid $30 million for, oh. once, for one copy that was found. 
and basically it talked about kind of instead of the whole rapture and uh, the actual, you know, Chris being dead for three days, he just ascended through light and became an embodiment of light and literally just transcended the actual death, whether it was staged or happened or not, that part didn't wasn't included in the book. His but energy just left his body, essentially. He, he literally transcended into light. That was him returning back home. And that's when, you know, the, the temple, uh, or when they were all t- speaking in tongues, etc. So with data, are you saying now that there is so much data that it can be overwhelming and there's too much? Or that it can be uh, adjusted and retooled because it's online and easier to manipulate? Well, both those and even more scary the second the internet goes down. It's where all is- gone. All of that. All of it. So there's no such thing as these handwritten, you know, sheets of paper on. You mean like all, the, so all these cloud storage yeah. units? They're going to go. Our blank? entire generation I, if, could be erased if theoretically. Could. So, and again, so all yeah, and then then how are we supposed to talk about facts? You know, how are we supposed to tell three generations below us about these things that happened about nine eleven? All that. Here's a question: Does this upcoming generation care? about what they're passing on history-wise to the next generation. Mm. You know, look at this World War II. As soon as all these veterans are gone, so let's call it 10, 15 years from now total, will, and say the baby boomers, right? When the baby boomers are gone, 20 years from now. Yep. How much um, efficience, credit, whatever, are we giving World War II veterans and what happened with those countries that stood up and, you know, li- liberty right across the border, trying to? You guys, like, like, is this generation just going to wipe it out? Yeah, like, I, I don't so. know. Yeah. Even as a 19 year old now, like, I, I, I was taught it in history, but there's no real effect it has on my life, right? Every year, every, like, generation, it just becomes more and more less important, you know? Like, I'm sure if I was born 2,000 years ago, I'd be pretty involved in, like, the life of Jesus Christ, whereas now it's a story. Yeah. Well, that, um, that's what I mean. Like, when I think about the younger generation now and the amount of information they're getting they're not storing or they're not legitimizing as much information as real and as something to hold on to it seems like it's just an in and out like a clickbait type of headlines in when you're out the other our generation our i think with the internet it's like a double-edged sword i think it's provided those who want to like become intellectual the best resource in probably human history but is also like mass brainwashing everyone into being meeting consuming idiots and they just are completely content flipping through snapchat the rest of their yeah life. and when you put it out like that i think actually we are and we and that's why i really despise the term woke is because i think most of these woke people are actually some of the most ignorant people i've ever met yeah. more ignorant than racist grandparents etc mm-hmm. be, because i think they know everything exactly and i I can Where see. the grandparent is just oblivious because that's the way they were taught. Exactly. And their yeah. brains are on the down dementia side. And it's like, you don't want to feel bad for them. But it's kind of like, if that's what you were told. That's your norm. Right. Exactly. You, if you were born and put in a cage, that's what you'll be. You yep. will be born and you, you can, will, yeah. that's the, that will affect the rest of your life. So I get that. And I get when you're really old, it's hard to change. But these young kids are now aware and have choices and multitudes of choices, are they really making the right choice or is there just trying to stir more shit up against, to revolt against old generations, which technically that's what conspiracy theories are. It's young generations pushing back on what they've been told from the older. That's an interesting point of view. My sociology teacher told me that. (laughs) See, I, I don't know if I can necessarily agree with that because... Again, if we were alive in that time, like, who's to say that there weren't people still thinking like this during that time? I don't think it's as... But were they doing it... Were those people pushing back to their older people? No, they probably were still concurrently freedom fighting. Now, and I mean, here's another problem. And this this is actually, okay, maybe a little personal note. This is kind of where I got in life. I was always looking into, you know, other sides of the country. You know, the coincidences with central banking and invading countries were to, you know, incite war, blah, 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 blah. And first and foremost, I said, okay, me sitting here thinking about this, what am I doing to contribute to what I think is wrong? You can't just say there's a problem if you're not going to provide a solution. Yeah. First and foremost. And you have to see both sides or all sides. You are are making an attempt to at least try to give the other side some credit that it did come from somewhere. So there might be something here. Let's open our eyes and take an objective look at it. Yeah. And it, it, whether it, you got to still keep it as a debate, but again, kind of 
maybe more treated as a debate, even though you know kind of where the conversation's going to go. Because it, I hate to say it, it, it comes down to if some person has taken more time to research it, they're going to have more to say about it. Right. It's, it's simple, right? Right. So I think the one of the, I think, I think it's just, it's so, it's like you say, it doesn't matter if you're not willing to do anything against it to so like do what you think is good. It's such a big problem that's been going on for hundreds of years with trillions of dollars and how, how everyone's saying, how do I make a difference? And see, I, that's where, and honestly, that's what got me into um, the Indigenous Environmental Program at Trent. I said, there are, there's wars happening all across the world, but meanwhile, there's a war happening on our own turf against, by technicality, our own Indigenous people. Yeah. So that right there, what when you look around you, you know, it's a, something as small as holding the door for somebody. Every single action has a chain reaction and it comes down to mm -hmm. instead of and the worst part is usually the smartest minds get caught up in that overthinking. And that's where I think they, they call us the lost generation for a very good reason, because the more intellectual ones are going to get so lost in trying oh, to yeah. find what's true and what's not. So is that so is this conspiracy is this a giant distraction to distract the smart Absolutely. youthful minds I, and maybe yeah. take 20 percent of those youthful smart minds and say okay you know what we've got them tied up with conspiracy thinking we'll we'll just drive them crazy and we can keep doing and what let we do them, right yeah. and so now we don't have to worry about 80 percent. so and is it like a tool 80 percent make uh, the the trick i think that whoever's in the power they won and they have won when they realize that you don't imprison someone physically because then they revolt. You prison them mentally yep. so they don't even know they're in prison. Well, isn't that the Panopticon? The, yeah, the illusion of freedom. Right. Yeah. You know, you, they put this security office with uh, two-way or one-way mirrors yep. and the prisoners all around them. So the prisoners don't know if there's actually security guards watching them. So they are under control because they're assuming that there's a security guard watching them, even though there might not be anybody behind that glass wall. That's yep. all mental. Yep. And, and it's just the people the too much of the population is not going to fight. No one's going to die for the a cause anymore. They're going to sit and they're going to eat ice cream and they're going to watch movies. Oh, it's, so that's a question for you, Brian. If there is now, are there any causes that you have in your life right now that you view that you would fight for and even put your life on the line for? Yes. Would you be willing to get into any of those? Um, oh, I let's would just say, clarify. You're willing to put your life on the line for these causes. If, if I were yeah. to hold a gun yeah. to your head, yeah, I'll die for it. Um, the I'm I don't I've been thinking a lot. It's like, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna be a huge fighter conspiracy person? And it's like, well, realistically, I'll probably just die if that happens. So or I could live this life, or what? What do I want to do? And I figured, what I want to do is become the best I can be. Just mm. be the best person I can. And the only time I would die is if I had to give up that. If I had, like, it's like. I would rather die than live in bondage. If I had to give yep. up, if I had to become a bad person or die, you know, if the Illuminati came to me and it's like, okay, now go on a killing spree and you're in or yep. we're going to kill you, then for myself, for my spirit and the goodness I am, I'll die for it. But right. I'm not, I wouldn't like go out and die meaninglessly to spread Like to awareness. be a martyr. Yeah, yeah exactly, no. And I think that you, I'm actually, a, I expected a totally different answer, but if there was an answer I wanted to hear, that was the one I wanted to hear. Because, and that's, and talking about that whole thing with, um, not necessarily like the distractions and the lost generation thing, but you, and this was another thing I kind of realized, sitting here talking about this, even if you're trying to, what you think is, you know, incited by a good cause, you are still being rebellious. You are still causing dismay and disruption. I can use either, what, what would you, uh, you two prefer? I can use Star Wars or I can use uh, Tupac as Star, an example. I've been into Star Wars leaking about theories about Star Wars lately. This so guy knows Star Wars okay. more than I knew Tupac, so yeah, let's go Star Wars. So th the dark side, yeah, the Sith, right? The dark side, they're the evil ones, yet the rebels are painted as the good guys. When theoretically, despite this type of, you know, world control... And all this, you know, even as far as I don't want to say colonization because it's much nicer in that movie than it is in real life. The concept within, you know, the, the Sith and the Dark Force was basically to eliminate human suffering. The clones weren't real people. So they right. anytime there were issues, 
you sent clones. Expendable. Ex- ex- precisely. And you're talking about, uh, even talking about, you know, what are, are humans a resource? Are they not a resource? Blah, blah, blah. Like right, because in, in some countries, right, humans are being, ca- like, they're like yeah. cattle. Yeah, they're being war. bred chess pieces. to create, the into, like, to sit on a line and punch holes into a sweater. Yep. And then die. And then, yeah, and well, on that note, I honestly, I wonder what even, if, if the thought capacity gets as far as this, you know, do we just think like this because of, you know, a different shift in the world? Is this because we have these different resources? Because well, I just, I, I wonder sometimes, you know, 8 billion or 7.5 billion people on earth, we've got, oh, 35 million in Canada and only 350 million in the States. So we're not even pushing 400 million in North America, not including Mexico. Yep. And it seems like, you know, YouTube and these social media or these um, these platforms, these entertainment platforms seem to be capitalizing on conspiracy theories. But are they like are they that big in these countries where there's billions of people? The people and dying if, of or are they malaria. just better at it? Is China better at it? Are they no, the best at this China, system? Like, are they like yeah. U.S. thinks they're amazing. And China's that they're running the up. show, but China's been around a lot longer. China's far longer. more dominant. Oh yeah, they can. They're not a flash in the pants. Like nope. they've been going around for hundreds and thousands of years. It's kind of similar to the way that they're going. To, they're operating now. You know, yep. they're westernizing a little bit because you you kind of have to. Yeah. But they're so big. They're so deep in tradition. Their history goes as far back as anybody's. Yep. Are they just waiting all this out? I think they just so. Doing I think a good job. I think they're, I think they're playing the opposite of America. America want, wanted to like flex their muscles and appear as big as they can. I think China is downplaying their strength, and then if it comes to that, boom. I boom. I would agree, and I personally think that like American politics is. Imagine here's here's a food for thought, just a total theoretical situation. Say there was a super advanced life form that was that predescended us a long time ago. We could go pre Mayans. You go back to even if you want to talk about Olympus or even even the Anunnaki, for example. Yeah. Right. So say they're staring down right now, whether they were trying for control or trying for this, you know, or if they said theoretically did say set this all up, like. The um the country of America is literally a TV show. It is yeah. so hysterical and satirical that and to, and then the fact that people buy into it and believe that this is actually relevant to their freedom. And again, this is where I talk about the yeah. illusion of freedom. Like we do not live in a democracy. Even even the fact that you know the the um the changing of the ballads or whatever, right? The whole yep. Russian this, Russian that, blah blah blah, <laughs> right? I mean. To mean, business. Yeah. Meanwhile, I think like we are actually one of the most fascist countries there are. Our politics is defined by money and the people that aren't in power are typically fighting for causes that, you know, don't make a lot of money and preserve because we're at an exploitive uh, mentality. And it, like I uh, talked about, you know, like a neoliberalistic type of thinking. It's literally and if you wanted to talk about good versus evil, you know, that's where you could see it right there. Evil is trying to, you know, go with Well, I want to talk. That's kind of a bigger topic. Yeah. I don't want to – I want to save that for a little bit because I want to actually talk about good, bad, dark, light, whatever, all of that. And like in the spectrum of how that works and how, you know, we each see that in our lives, you know. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Now, when we were just talking about the U.S. and like – in the well, yeah, the clone stuff. But I'm thinking more of U.S. running their show the way that they want to. Like, is are they using mass media essentially to Pro- control propaganda everything yes. where mass media doesn't affect those people in China or India where there's billions or even in Mexico to but some they extent? They have their own mass media, and right? do they? That's yeah. and see, that's just it. I have friends in Russia, I have friends in South America. The stories I hear from them are not what you hear on the mainstream news, even when you see. And this is where, like, I laugh and I wish that I had, I was able to speak a bunch of languages. When I hear, you know, I see a news clip of one of, you know, a, a, say a Chinese administrator talking and you see the caption. Like, who's, oh, yeah. How do you know? How, yeah. Well, I was in China when the first Gulf War hit. Okay. And I was in North China, like the middle of nowhere. There was a few TV channels. And so the Gulf War hit. Sorry, not the first one, the second one. The first, yeah. Not the first one. I was going to say the yeah. first two. The or? second one. So. There were three U.S. soldiers that went missing. The U.S. news media was saying, these soldiers are missing, we don't know where they are, whatever. I was watching them on TV get tortured. 
Yeah. I was physically watching them get tortured on mainstream TV. on the Chinese main TV, whatever. I don't know what channel it was because you're just flipping. I didn't understand yeah. it, but I'm I'm watching it. But the U.S. channel's telling everybody that we don't know where they are, and then it just kind of fades to black, and nobody talks about it anymore. I thought that was wild. And and this is where I've kind of I thought maybe even I have it backwards, and I to kind of tie in the Star Wars thing. If the U.S. were to if that were to hit the mainstream news. What happens? Right. We all revolt. The whole world is basically going to go in dismay. This whole, you know. Do we? Or do we stop caring in seven days? Ab, I think completely opposite because even the reason that we're having this conversation right now is because of that same type of thinking. The fact that it might actually exist drives us to rebel. It's hard. Like, um, it's hard to look at news agencies for myself personally, uh, like I, that most would because of A, like that situation. I was also in China when SARS hit, okay. and my mom's calling me like, whoa, what's going on? I'm watching news, and there's all these people with face masks and all that. Well, there was nobody in Hong Kong with a face mask. Face mask. Very, very few people. We were using face masks that we brought from Canada as taxi, care, taxi cab fare. Instead of paying them money, we were giving them paper because that's that. what they wanted. Yep. There was nobody there. So there was no trains emptying in this pandemonium with people in face masks running off the trains that North American media was showing everybody about SARS. It's all bullshit. That wasn't happening, yep. right? So that's that. I have the thing about the U.S. guys. I was at Hurricane Dennis, Myrtle Beach. Family up here is watching... A crazy hurricane me and my buddy are in the water in the ocean yeah it was Nothing wavy happened. it was wavy it was stronger and it was you know it was it was fun yeah. <laughs> but it was Surf's nothing up. right we're in the water we're on the beach and again and this is the seeing, same one the same one are... same time like this was like i went back in the hotel hey yeah i was just at, oh my god what are you talking about like aren't there wood boards up over uh, no it's like the moon landing. I hate to say it as again <laughs> satirical, like um, ridiculous. ridiculous. Is it ridiculous? I Come saw in. read a story on that yesterday and how that kind of came to be and why that was. It's a bunch of horseshit. That Cold War tactic, first and foremost. Is it? Yeah, because Russia. Well, Russia and China were up there before. But again, this is and see, this is all stuff. I think that the human mind is only capable of knowing so much, and once. The problem is the more you know, the more you become involved, the more you become, and knowledge is power. Yeah. Mm. So 100%. I pushed back on my university teacher thinking she was like the knew everything. I was like, listen, okay, I get you're educated, but at the end of the day, we're in the grocery store lineup together. I don't, give, I don't care who you are. If you're a good person, you're a good person. If you're not, you're not. Yeah. But now I understand after being there for a few years, you do start to critically think, I guess, is the biggest thing. Everything. Yep. And by doing that, you're actually becoming smarter because you're trying to look at both sides. You're trying yep. to dis, um, you know, to to fight what the norm is being told with tools like research, ways to research, ways to talk to people, ways to you know gather information. And I do, I for sure, I would say that education for maybe what you're learning, not so much, but the ability to learn. Yep is what is more impo- most important and critically think. 100%. So schooling-wise, do you find you're in university, you're thinking about it soon, is this a place to go to push these no. conspiracy theory boundaries or is everybody afraid and they're just sitting in their bedrooms doing it? Depends on what school you go to, depends on the funding behind the school, depends on all kinds of factors. Um, I'll be honest, I was actually a high school dropout, believe it or not. I dropped out of school. I ended up finishing it on my own time. Uh, I ended up going to college, graduating, and then actually got to university. I was anti-school. I I never showed up. Yeah, same thing happened to me. Yeah. Well, then what happened? If you're anti-school, you don't get through or get into university. I finished an entire semester in three weeks on my own time. I'll be honest. I got wasted. And I just got the thing done because if I – and again – Instead of calling it all these problems, if I want to be part of the solution, then I have to go through the system. I can't. You got to rip- play the game. Yep. Ex- you, bingo. Those are the words. You have to play the game. It is all one big game. And it's how yeah. you play the game that defines who you are. <sighs> yes and no. It depends. Well, what what game do you think you're playing, and what is your purpose of it? So in that case, okay. So what game you're are. playing? 
how you're playing it, which is essentially the purpose. Yep. I don't think it depends but I guess, who you are, but what you become. Like who you are is who you are, but whatever you end up being to this world is based on how you play. Like I take the approach that everybody gets my full respect, color, gender, whatever before I even talk about them, before yep. I even know them, anything. And the only way that that will be affected is by their actions towards you. towards me or towards my friends or something I factually know about that person. Yep. If I don't mm-hmm. factually know something, then they get a clean slate and we go from there. That, to me, has seemed to work, especially with new people that I'm meeting because I feel that they can kind of sense that they're not being judged. Yep. Is that something that you know should be practiced more, or is that really? Am I just an anomaly, or like how? Like why doesn't everybody think that? Why doesn't everybody give everybody a clean slate? I don't think people are realizing that because you might hear, you know, you're going through the grocery store, and that you know your sales clerk or whatever gives you a miserable, mean, you know, look, and you walk out of the store thinking, oh wow, he or she's a bitch. And meanwhile, you know, their whole family just died that morning, right? And you'll never know that. Mm -hmm. So I think and that's the issue is more so judgment. You know, I think we're all open minded, but we don't realize how we judge or how we stereotype. so subconscious. Precisely. It's not because we can be consciously aware. But again, the subconscious, because of the way we're trained, you know. How big do you think the subconscious is? Here, I I have an example of. This is the first time I noticed that I am like a little racist. And I'm not racist, but like a, a subconscious part of my mind from being raised. I was I was like 15, I started smoking weed and when I was smoking I I would I could feel my body more and I realized I it was nighttime and I passed by just like a big like 6'2 black guy and I noticed just you brace my body up and weight, tense up. my body weight switched and I was like in my mind it's nothing. But eat my body physically responded in a defensive way. And I was like, holy shit, I'm racist. Like, I'm not a racist person. Why is that in me? Why? But if it was a little old white lady. No. But where lady, was that, my though? Chest. Like, where, like, did you just said. I was walking down the street. At night? Yeah, or like dusk. I don't know. Like, it's just, Any 6'2 person, me personally, you walking in dusk and I'm high. I don't care who that is, what color. You could be green I don't or think purple. I would have done it if it was a white. I, okay, I don't try, know. But... I, I no? I don't know. I, I understand. Talk rap. Sorry, let's talk like yeah, use yeah. the rap example, you know. If you're playing rap beats, who do you think the first person is going to like your music more, a black person or a white person? Absolutely. But I think I don't think that's racist. I think because culturally. Okay, hold on. I'm going to a cultural culture. stereotype, though. That's great. But, but it's gonna... true. But if statistically, if you're looking at the amount of people that like real hip hop, I'm not talking Zanny Trap. Yep. Real hip hop, it was always a black culture thing. The amount of black people that like it would be way more than white people. So, is that racist or is that statistical analytics? I still think it's a. I, now I look at it as a cultural stereotype because if you're going into the assumption that somebody is that because of the way yeah, that you thought absolutely. they were raised, because that every single and that's where I you talk about the unity of one. Like I think we're literally all. Not as not only intertwined, but we're all the same. We all yeah. have the same capabilities. Absolutely. The same. It's just every single little chain reaction. Because I mean, in theory, we're just we're little bits of energy, you know, through an optical illusion. That's why I make the joke. Imagine if you were blind. Everything oh, yeah. that you think you know around you doesn't even exist. I wish. And I I encourage more people to do that. That's where meditation comes in, and that's where finding those different senses and higher powers because we overstimulate one sense so much. That we understimulate the rest of them, or even neglect yeah, them. I guess well, it's sight, eh? That we so heavily depend on the material, and it. To- yeah, you're right. It totally cuts off. Especially, I find our six senses. We're taught five senses. We have so many more than. Yeah, we got like twenty something. Yeah. When I when I had Douglas in here, he's been on the show. Um, yep. and he's visual impairment. He's a person with a disability. He talked about, and he from birth, he's had virtually no sight. And he talked about how he picks up on emotion and the actual energy and, he and can feel. See, can he yeah. see it no, too? No. Okay. Well, no, but well, actually, I didn't ask him that. Okay. I was someone asked said I should have asked him that. Yeah. I should have. But what I'm trying to say is that when when I you and I are talking right now, I can see your face. I can see your hands. I kind of know you're nodding. You're you know whatever. I can read your body language, and that's part yep. of you communicating. He can't see that. Yep. He's picking up on an energy yep. and an emotion mm-hmm. tone before volume. seeing. 
Like that's huge, and he, you know, and he can tell if you're if you're being genuine, if you're not, if you're holding back just by the emotion and the way you're saying words, and probably only a couple sentences too. He doesn't have to sit there and look at the situation. No pun intended. Yeah, literally. Yeah, yeah. No. And he's feeling the situation. Yeah. He would learn to trust it. I think that I think the greatest gift a human has that is also the thing that most people miss is intuition. Big time. I don't know what it is, but it's right most of the time. Have and, they pinpointed and, intuition, or is there any background onto intuition? I think it's spiritual. I yeah. Believe. Well, we could talk about you know kind of the shockers and whatnot. Like it's your it's based in your sixth, you know, your third eye, etc. And I think that's where we come down. Actually, one of the best books I ever read, and I highly recommend it to everybody listening. In is the Power of Your Subconscious. One yeah. of the best books I've ever read. Who wrote it? I can't remember off the top of my head. It's a gold orange cover. So the power of your subconscious. Okay. PDF. Yeah. That and power versus force. What would that help somebody with? So for who, okay, who would you want to read that? Somebody who's into this conspiracy and is unsure of where the world's running or a sheep? I think I, I think it's beneficial to anybody because it's just going to give you a better understanding of how your brain works and how to not even control your brain and to be aware of your instincts, of your your you subconscious know, precisely yeah i don't want to yeah. keep using the word i want to yeah, find yeah. a synonym for it but yeah when realistically we act out of it way more than we do our conscious we have to every single thing we do until we actually take that deep breath say whoa this is this very moment right now is our subconscious me talking right now is my subconscious until right this second when i'm actually trying to think about each individual word i'm saying hmm Right, and the word is just a symbol at the end of the day of an emotion that you're trying to communicate with. Exactly. The, every just, word is yeah. just a made-up word to represent something else in a context that we can understand and maybe put form to and put shape to. I think it even goes as far as certain languages, I find, depending on how they're spoken. Like, vibration is a thing. You know, you look at the way, you know, chakras are, quote-unquote, realigned, I think— and I actually personally think that English, just certain words that we use, like the cacophony in some of them, the words just sound so bitter and we might not mean to use them in a bad way, but just the vibration of the word itself. I don't like English. Yeah, I don't. Boring. Is it boring? Do you know German? Uh, no, but I as well we'll be learning it soon. So Are you learning it soon? Uh, next, I'm going to transfer over to Germany next I'm, year. So I'm lear- Are you doing what I just what I'm doing? Yeah, coincidentally, yeah, the 1.0 because they don't start up till October, and then yeah, but because just, yeah, like my first month of September when I go away, I'm yep. only lear- learning German, and yep. I can't. I'm so excited. I I'm probably going to butcher it, and I'm going to be shit, but I'm really excited to maybe get an understanding on how they communicate language. The same things that I'm saying in English, do I have a different feeling towards them when I say them in German? Yeah. Or when I hear someone in German say something and talk to me, am I going to perceive it the same way as I perceive English? Or is it going to change my interpretation of what they're saying because of the language, since it's only a symbol? Yeah. And I personally, and I, I'm kind of excited just to learn it for that same reason to find that out and ask those questions myself. But yeah. I even like when I'm hearing words from like I have a lot of uh, Brazilian friends that speak Portuguese and just even some of the words they talk like it is a very smooth and subtle language. Like you even look at how like the country of Portugal, it's very and now they're I mean, they're from Brazil, but even, you know, like the Portuguese culture, very relaxed. Nobody's in a rush. Everybody enjoys themselves. There's none of this. And their language is very subtle to the point. Um, A friend of mine even said it's almost like not a romantic language, but it's very, you know, very casual with the things that we might get, you know, think up in our head. And maybe that's more cultural than the language itself. But things are just, you know, they come across a lot differently. Right. So when I think of language as well, I think of certain words that are really powerful. And I wonder if those words are just as powerful or is it the actual meaning behind it? Mm. Now, are there certain words... In English, that are forbidden to say, and maybe let's c word. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, yeah, let's, we'll leave that one. <laughs> first one that um, came to mind. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's the second worst word for me. Oh, n word's number one. I'll never that'll never come out of my mouth okay, at any fair. point for anything. Even if I'm, you know, I'm a huge Easy E fan. Easy does it. That record he came out with, I literally can go word for word almost the entire record Blank i will note. never say that n word sometimes i'll maybe put in the word brother yeah if it makes player. sense but i'm kind of right player whatever just something different to get the flow but no that word's not coming out yeah that or would actually consciously. be right and you know what that would even be a um a tough word to say with a gun to my head 
Yep. To be honest, like if I'm somewhere and people are around me going, yeah, yeah, you can say it. Yeah, yeah, we give you permission. Fuck that. There is yeah. no permission. I don't care who you are. You're telling me I've got permission to say that? Well, what about the other 1.5 billion yeah, people they're not with gonna colors? Be as right. No, 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 no. And That's too much respect. For yeah, me. like no I, way, no chance. I can't believe I'm saying this on the air, but like I grew up with a couple black friends and we referred to each other as, yeah, my N, you know? Yeah, I would yeah. never do that. Yeah, and when I freaked out rats when I was like 14. And crazy. Yeah. But again, and at that point in time, though, that was normal because I thought, oh, if if you're giving me the right to say it, mm-hmm. then I'm OK to say it. You know, you're comfortable with that. Well, and- I watched it in Oprah, actually, with Jay-Z and Oprah was in the stance saying that word should never be said. And Jay-Z was like, you know what? We took ownership of that it's word. It's our word. We, can we do own we it. Want with right. It. We're taking the power away from it. And I sat there and I thought, OK, I get Jay-Z 100 percent, but I also Still get Oprah. Bullshit. Right. I'm also like Oprah, like Oprah, it's a hurt that hurts yep. so many people. And that word continues to hurt people. Right. So people that own it, that's fine. They do whatever they want with it. But in society, it's still used as that one word that is going to create huge divide and and um, friction and fighting and but all that. Literally what I'm hearing there is basically racism versus reverse racism, racism, you know, oh, now we can say it, but you can't. Does that not incite somebody else now to want to say it more? Well, they're right? using it powerful yeah. as well. Like it's just uh, again, yeah, that's, yeah. it's a big word that, and, and whoever's definition and how they want to use that word is up to them. But I will never say it. And if I ever hear of or see somebody inappropriately using it, I take big offense. Not yeah. just because of you know that I'm against it, but just as the the humanity part of it yeah, like, it's a cultural e- hate right equality yeah. part well, it's of now it now like, becoming like a cultural phenomenon like it's with the youth it's become like the oh all oh, the white oh kids oh but all of them like just going to school it's said every day everywhere like it's just used now so so much it's at the point where it's probably limiting vocabulary is yeah. it used so in high school you just came out of high school Bren yeah would you hear that word in classrooms oh from God. all colors oh, all, no no very rarely do you hear a white person but like say it definitely I think it's now it seems at least the white people that do say it they don't say it out in public and open because I'm sure that they I hope they would have at least a piece of them that understands it's wrong to say I more so like the only times and obviously now I'm referring to probably people more involved with the rap like a lot of younger white rappers oh, yeah. think it's okay to use because it's and no like, hard R yeah and even then like you said like the kind of like the cultural phenomenon especially you know you hear it especially like in black music it could be every three words like it's it's you know it's a great filler word and that's part of the problem like I can't argue with that but again there's a thousand other words you can use and if you don't val- it just comes to, yeah what do you value yeah. right if a word has so much power on society are you willing to use it even are you willing to treat it as a joke are you thinking that you're part of it or you have a right to say it i'm just wondering like the world war ii where those vets are going to be gone and the baby boomers are going to be gone and then nobody remembers world war ii will people remember what that word stood for 50 100 years ago and the pain the n-word and what pain had brought in in slavery and all of that or will they or will people just be using that word as a as a word as of of being powerful and this is our word we can do it without understanding where all that history came from and i kind of think that's where oprah was saying is like yes we can own that word and take control of it but you can never forget what happened it will be forgotten because it's still happening and and to some extent but like could we use like seinfeld as example you know like a soup nazi i don't know i've never watched seinfeld oh okay well just so i'm just kind of thinking like because we're talking in the future i'm trying to like step back into the past to blah 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 you know once upon a time like that word was you know post world war ii like you don't even speak of it right to a degree yeah. the word nazi yeah right. or at least as far as i'm from the understanding that i got but then it turns 30 years later it becomes it's in a comedic skit using to describe you know like i said the soup nazi no soup for you okay right so yeah. back to uh, the listeners just to give everybody a scope of where we're at yeah bren jordan both young 19 20, 23 23 yep. Uh, you know, I'm a little bit older than that. So what I like about right now is that we're getting a perspective of two kids here. Sorry. For I'll take kids, it. I'll but, take yeah. it. All <laughs> right. All right. I am but, you know, right, I want right, to give everybody a little perspective here that everybody does have a voice and that 19, 20, 21, 22 year olds, 
their voice is important as well because they have a perspective that might be a little different and not the norm to what people might think from mass media. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that their voice is is in, unimportant as well. Yeah, that's what I, I hate. My entire life has been infuriating being discredited because I'm young. So yeah, I yep. may be 16, but I've thought enough for some 50-year-olds. Like people are like intellectually different. Some people don't think about things. I've been thinking about things since I learned how to think. So like I'm I'm not I'm maybe ignorant but I'm not stupid. I everyone deserves respect. Wisdom comes from experience, not age. Well, and life experience, 100%. Yep. Yeah, and some people unfortunately grow up very fast or think about things and put their themselves through mental stages really fast. Yeah. I think that's why you see even the rise of a lot of these mental issues and etc is not only are we on a whole verge of a shift but on people trying to really understand why and how it's happening and really cope with you know the way their brains developing etc because again this this path of ignorance is dying really fast but at the same time is also like in the wrong ways being like superseded with you know the the super extre- uh, the radical far left i'm personally i'm a bit of a leftist but i'm i can't agree with what the far left has to say right it's a spectrum yeah just like dark and light there exactly. is no pure, pure, pure dark, and is there, there is no pure. Well, no. we're go, we're going on this we scale, I and there is no think assuming. I... I'm assuming my interpretation. There's yeah. no 100 percent dark, and there's no 100 percent light. It's a spectrum of in between. It could be 99 to one or one to 99, right? And that's a little flex there. So would that be the same as what you're trying to say there? Uh, yeah, completely. Now, and there, and again, that's the second you put them and think that there's two. Yes, there's two polar opposites, but they're still part of one. They're not divided. They're not separate. They're just two opposite. sides of one coin. Precisely. Yeah, That's exactly. I, I agree with that. I was just playing devil's advocate. Yeah, no, well, well put. Okay, honestly. so we got to tie this first seg- segment up right now. We're going to get into a few other things in a minute when we come back for part two. Quickly, because we'll probably get away from this, you are going to give advice to a high school group of assorted high school students, grade... 11 students you got like a minute just to tell them something what do you think is most important what message would you give them right now right off the top of your head you just boom here you go one minute first and foremost um it's not about being afraid to speak it's about being afraid to be judged do not be afraid to stand up and say what you have to say but again just because you personally believe it or think it doesn't mean that somebody else isn't able to teach you nor learn from you so talk to some talk to everybody as if you're either teaching and learning, not or teaching and learning. Both it's it's a mutual relationship going back and forth. Um, don't overstress the small things and really take the time to focus on you because if you're not good, you can't help anything else around you. So kind of like put your oxygen mask on first in an airplane when the yep, and then help everybody else out because if, again, if you're not good, you're actually only going to create more havoc. You're going to display that same internal havoc upon everyone else. All right, and Bren, what do you got to say? Every single conscious living thing is a part of God, and I don't mean like in a religious sense. I mean like life itself is God, and God doesn't divide from you. The only thing you can do is divide yourself from it. Don't do it. Try and reconnect with God, your spirit, a true sense of oneness and functionality. It's just like a flow. Like the universe is just an ocean. God existence is all just an ocean. Just like just swim and don't worry so much about the bullshit. Unity and divine self. Yeah. Okay. Well, great little tune up to what's to come for round two. Thanks for tuning in to Impression Extension. This was Bren and Jordan Unlearn. Stick around. Part two is coming up. We're going to talk, talk some dark and light energy. We're Absolutely. also going to put uh, Unlearn to the test on what his name means Ooh. and if he really believes it or not. Ooh. And uh, we'll see. All right. Thanks. Stick thanks, around. guys. Thank you.